My name is Helena Oft, and I am a senior in the Georgetown College, graduating with majors in neurobiology and sociology. As someone pursuing a career in medicine, having these overlapping perspectives from two very different fields of study has not only changed my understanding of how social medicine is, but also reaffirmed to me that both fields are continuously improved through research. My choice of research subject, by which I mean victims of sexual assault in the medical setting, developed in both sociology and pre-medical coursework, as well as through my personal experiences working with people who have faced sexual violence here at Georgetown as a hospital advocate and as an EMT in San Francisco. Research into the experiences of survivors of sexual assault in the medical system has expanded since the term institutional betrayal was developed to refer to the failure of an institution, in this case the medical system, to prevent or adequately respond to an individual's trauma. Smaller studies have suggested that victims of sexual assault experience higher rates of institutional betrayal than the members of the average population, and have shown that institutional betrayal in the healthcare system corresponds to poorer health outcomes. At this time, however, no study has investigated the impact that medical system betrayal of victims of sexual assault has on their health. The question this project aims to answer, in a sample more representative of the U.S. population, is whether victims of sexual assault are at greater risk for healthcare institutional betrayal and institutional betrayal-mediated health burdens. I collected responses to a survey compiled of previously validated measures for physical and mental health, unwanted sexual experiences, institutional betrayal, and history of traumatic events through the Qualtrics survey platform. Statistical analysis revealed that not only did unwanted sexual experiences correspond to higher institutional betrayal in and outside the healthcare system, but that this institutional betrayal also predicted increased mental and physical health symptoms, even when considering a respondent's history of trauma and other identity factors, including race, income, and gender. When I first proposed this project, I was met with support and guidance that ultimately helped me build this project over the last two years. Fundamental in taking this idea and developing it into an actual investigation were the foundations laid by doctors Jennifer Freight and Carly Smith, who were in the first group to research institutional betrayal. I reached out to them in designing this process and obtaining approvals to use their measures they had developed for institutional betrayal and history of trauma. In order that this research fall in canon with previous investigations, I used the institutional betrayal questionnaire, the institutional betrayal questionnaire specialized for the healthcare system, the IBQH, an adaptation of the 15-item patient health questionnaire, the 40 item trauma symptom checklist and the sexual experiences survey short form for victimization and the brief betrayal trauma survey. Approval to administer this survey via Qualtrics was granted by the Georgetown MedStar Institutional Review Board. Funding was provided by the Georgetown Social Innovation and Public Service Fund. Once approved, the survey was released on Qualtrics, which allows individuals to take the nearly 15-minute survey on a number of online platforms. In 10 days, we gathered 7,779 responses, of which 1,632 complete responses from individuals approximately reflecting national averages in terms of race, gender, and age were considered. Responses were balanced in terms of income. I compared the mean healthcare institutional betrayal questionnaire scores between different identity groups and ran simple regression analyses to show whether certain variables could predict one another. These outcomes are represented here. You can see that those reporting unwanted sexual experiences also report higher institutional betrayal in the healthcare system, which is consistent with previous findings in the smaller sample. You can also see in the scatter plot that as total unwanted sexual experiences increase, an individual has a greater likelihood of experiencing healthcare institutional betrayal. A similar trend was observed when comparing healthcare institutional betrayal and physical and mental health symptoms. As reported betrayal increased, so did mental and physical health symptoms. Additional statistical analysis shows that this relationship was not explained by other identity factors or by sexual experience alone, suggesting that institutional betrayal in the healthcare system is a key mediator of these adverse health effects. I was surprised by the outcomes of this investigation because in our survey, both unwanted sexual experiences and institutional betrayal are more common in the general population than indicated by previous studies. Overall, my findings support a strong association between the institutional betrayal of victims of sexual assault and lasting health consequences for them, independent from the confounding effects of race, income, age, or past trauma. I would like to thank Professor Sue for advising me throughout this process and for the contributions I have received from the Georgetown SIPS program, without whom this would truly not be possible. I have been overwhelmingly impressed and grateful for all the support people in the sociology department at Georgetown and in my work for survivor advocacy have shown for this project and for all the ways that their advice has helped to improve it. Thank you for your time and consideration.